And you're already signing in. So if you cannot use your USB 3 ports with Windows 7, 8, or 10, then you're in the right spot. This video is what we're going to be covering today. So we're going to have to be getting your USB 3 ports to work. So if you're using a Windows 7, 8, or 10 installation disk and you can't even use your keyboard and mouse, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit the power button on your computer, power all the way down, and then power back up. And when it is powering up, you're going to want to hit either delete or you're going to want to hit F10, F12, F8, or F2. Alright, so we're going to power up. Just hit the power button. Now, as it's powering up, we're going to want to be, in my case, I'm going to be pressing the delete key, which it should actually say right there. My up mine says press delete, so I'm going to be pressing the delete key. You might want to tap it a few times. So here we go, we're inside the BIOS. So inside the BIOS, we're going to navigate around using the arrow keys and using the enter key once you want to select something. So just go browse over to the advanced tab then you're going to want to go with integrated peripherals. Hit enter inside there. This should give you some more options here. Now, you want, the one we're interested in right now is the PS2 em, keyboard slash mouse emulation, which isn't really PlayStation 2. What it is is P slash, PS slash 2 is a really old keyboard slash mouse controller. So we're just going to allow our USBs to kind of emulate that for now. So hit enabled and hit enter. So now that we should be good, this should allow us to use our keyboard and mouse just enough so we can get our, our USB 3.0 adapter set up. And this might be a bit different with you because mine is an Acer BIOS, you might have something like maybe an, an Asus BIOS or however you say that weird name. But anyway, when you're done in the advanced tab, hit escape, then we're going to want to browse over to the exit tab, which is right there, and then we're just going to go over save and exit setup, hit enter, and then say yes with enter. So now, now we should be good to go, it will reboot up back up, we should be able to use a keyboard and mouse just enough to get everything set up. So if your system is already set up and it's already installed, the, and your USB 3 ports won't work, then we're going to need to actually install a driver for it. So one way you can do this is just go to the start menu, Windows 7, it's actually fairly easy, you just go to control panel, and then change the view from category to small icons. Because then what we're looking for is we're looking for the device manager, which is right there. We're going to click on that, and this is going to open up all the devices. So now you probably should see underneath one of these little yellow exclamation marks, you should see universal serial bus controllers. If you don't, it means you've already got your system all set up with your USB 3s. But if you have, if it there, if there's a little exclamation mark there, what you can do is you can right click that, and then it should say update drivers. You want to click that, and then you can automatically do it from the internet, or if you don't have internet access to that computer yet, because you have got that adapter set up, then we're just that's okay too. Then we're just going to need to manually browse for wherever our driver is on the internet, which should be fun. So I don't have internet quite yet on this computer, but I do have it on my Linux. So I'm going to boot up with my Linux a quick a minute, and then I'm going to browse for my USB 3 driver. And lastly, before we switch over and boot up with Linux, which has internet access, we want to figure out what processor our computer has. So to do that, you should just go to Control Panel. It should be just right there. Control panel on Windows 7, it's really easy. So, and then you should see system. You're gonna wanna go, and go with that one, A. And then it should take you over to here. This will tell you pretty much everything you need to know about your computer. So right here, system, processor. This tells me that I have an Intel Core i5 6400 CPU at 2.7 gigahertz. The gigahertz isn't really important for us right now, but it's just, the, these numbers are right here. Intel Core i5 6400 6, processor. So that's what we're going to keep in mind to remember when we're searching for our driver. Okay, so we're, I'm on a Linux right now. It's just because it has access to internet right now. Because I haven't got my Windows 7 quite set up with internet access quite yet. i got to get the driver for that. So but anyway, open up your web browser. You, get the, it just, you don't have to use Linux or anything. It just has to be something that connect, can connect to the internet and download stuff. So then we're going to, first we're going to start by going to the manufacturer of our PC in general, which mine is Acer, it's pretty easy to tell, if you just take a look, there should be a logo of some kind, if it's Asus or Acer, or something like that, or MSI, so mine is Acer, so we're just going to go Acer and then download, so you're going to go with that, and then you're just, I'm going to go with uh, download drivers from the Acer official site. Now the first thing, now if you send someone like this, you probably should, and it's you're going to want to enter the serial, or, or it's basically your model number of the, the device that you have. So typically, if you can, it's actually pretty easy to find it. On a desktop, it's typically going to be located 
in the bottom right hand corner of its case so there we go it should be it should be right there that little snid you're gonna want to go with that number there and that's just the model of your computer so this is my pc model yours might be different of course so then you'll just gonna just make sure it looks the same and everything like that and that should be a sticker on the side of what as well mine says acer atc 710 you won't go well make like sure that those numbers match up so i'm gonna go driver right here click that little plus button and we should, on all these drivers, well, we're looking for this a USB 3 driver, which we don't seem to see. If you don't see a USB 3 driver, that's okay. It should be either on the chipset driver or it's not going to be on that website. If it's not on this website, you're going to want to go to the manufacturer of your processor's website. So we're back at Google then. So once you know the name of your processor, you're going to want to figure out what generation it is, which is important. So mine, I'm just, mine is an Intel, it's a, not a 1.5, an i5. And it's a 6400 processor. So then if you just hit enter with that, and it should, the first thing to pop up should match up with your search, which mine is i5 6400. So that's what we're going to want to go with right here. So click that link there, and then this will provide us with a bit more information. So underneath the product collection, that's what we're looking at, 6th generation Intel Core R5 processor. So that this here tells us it's the 6th generation. That's going to be important later on. So now we're going to go back and we're just going to search intel and then download center that's what we're going to go with typically go with the first link that pops right up this might be different if you're on an amd website so and then right here if they have a nice little search box it's pretty easy to find you just go usb and then three and it'll typically pop something up right away on intel it's usb 3.0 extensible host control driver we're going to click that and now and now we're going to want to we can click these links a quick second here just we're going to see, we want to get provided a bit more information. So, we're not sure which USB driver this is for. So, we're going to go to with the README right here. README text. And then this here should tell us which which processors this is driver is for. So, right here it says, Note, this document refers to systems containing the following Intel processors slash chipsets. So, it's got 9, 8 series. No, 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 we're looking at. All right, right here. Intel 6th generation Intel Core processors. That was what we're looking at. So this is in fact the right driver for our computer. So you're gonna click that nice blue download button right there. I do accept, read all that. Wait, actually probably should read all that a quick second. Read all that really quickly. Alrighty. So it should be a zip file. It doesn't matter what you're using to download it. It just matters you can download it. So we're gonna save this file and it's gonna download. And then it's gonna download slowly, that's for sure. So it's gonna take a quick, whoa. Did that download already? So once it's downloaded, it by default it'll be in your downloads folder, which mine is right here. And it should be this one right here. Make sure it matches all up. So oh, you're gonna wanna grab a USB. You're gonna plug that USB into your computer. If you're on Windows already, then you can just skip this step. You don't need to copy it to your USB. Now we're gonna drag and drop it out. You can see I've already set up quite a few drivers here. So you're gonna drag and drop that one, make sure Make sure it matches up with the one that you downloaded. Drag and drop it onto your USB. And there we go. So now we're done with the downloads. Now we just need to use this. Okay, so we've got our USB 3 driver on our USB chip. But since we can't use our USBs with our Windows machine for whatever reason, we're going to need it to use a disk to get it there. So we're going to want to go to a different computer that already has access. You can already use the USBs on it. And you can use disks on it. Typically, if you don't have one around and it's just like your only computer, you can probably go to your local library and you can just ask it. Ask the librarian if you can borrow their computer a second because you need to get yours set up. They'll typically, they won't mind. So from there, once you get to your machine that you can use a USB and then you can burn to a disc, then you're just going to insert an empty disc. It should be a CDR is what we're going to want to use. CDR. And you're just going to want to insert that disc right into the drive. Speaking of USB drives, when I got this computer and I had it for like a year and then also like I go to close it and also like, it just gets stuck. And there's like a big wad of sap in there, like a tree sap, eh? That was weird, so it took me a while to clean it up. I have no idea how that sap got there. That was some sticky stuff, and uh, that kind of freaked me out a little bit, because I'm like, uh-oh. Like, what, what what would sap be doing into my CD drive? But anyway, once you get your CD in there, you're going to want to take that USB that we already copied the driver to. You're going to plug her in, and everything should be relatively the same if you're on Windows 8, 7, or 10. So you're going to want to go to this PC, or my computer, which to get to it, if you're on Windows 7, you can just go click there and that should be computer. If you're on Windows 10, it's a bit different. You just scroll all the way bottom and there should be like Windows system and then this PC is under it. So then 
what you want to do is you want to open up your USB drive. I've got it open in a window right here. And then you, what you want to do is if you just double click first on the drive, and then it should say that it should say burn disk. How do you want to use this disk? You want to make sure you have it checked. Use like a USB flash drive so that you can save, edit, and write files to the disk. So then hit next. It's just going to quickly format it a quick second. Alright, so I'm pretty sure it's formatted now. I think it, it just closed out of the window for some reason a quick second. But now what we can do is now open in our USB drive right here. We're going to go with that, U, that U, Intel USB 3.0 host controller here. And we just drag and drop straight onto the disk. From there, it's just going to copy over to the disk. Once we get that disk burned, then we're going to take that disk. And you guess it, or then we're going to go back to the computer that can't use USBs. And we're going to put that disk in there and reboot. Okay, so it says it's finished, but because we're burning a disk, we want to be sure. So you go to, to go again to my computer or this PC, right-click on the disk, and hit eject. So then it should say, preparing to eject. Please wait while this session is closed so that the disk can be safely used on other computers. So just going to wait a second for the disk to pop out, which this will provide us an excellent opportunity to put our necks in. Careful not to scratch her. So we've got the disk out. We burned to the disk, the correct USB 3 driver. So now what we want to do is we want to power down this machine, go to our computer that we can't use our USB 3 ports on, and then we're going to boot back up. Now, when you boot with your computer that you can't use USB 3 ports on, if all of your ports are USB 3, you won't be able to use the keyboard or mouse. So again, you want to follow the first steps in the video where it showed how to use the BIOS to enable PS2 control emulation. Okay, so we're booted back up again, once again with our Windows machine that cannot use our USB 3 ports. So then we're going to take that disk that we burned to, insert it into the drive, and then you just want to give it, just give it a little bit so that it can, has time to load up. Then you're going to want to go to my computer again, and then from there, you're going to open up the disk. So just double click on her, and then you should see a compressed a zipped folder. Just right click on it, and then you should see this extract all button. You're going to click that, this little window will pop up. And then we're going to select the destination. I'm going to want to browse. I'm going to save this onto my desktop. So just click browse. You should see desktop. Click that. And then hit OK when you're done. Click extract. And then it's going to copy all this straight over to the desktop. And now all you have to do is just open it up. And in here you should see uh, setup. Setup is the one that we're interested in. Right there. It's an application. So anyways. If you get this screen or something like that. And it doesn't say it fails and dies. You know you got the right one. I already have it all set up, so you just basically click next to everything, make sure you agree to everything. If you do actually get the wrong driver, that's okay. If you want to run setup and I'll say ask you for permission, a little thing will just pop right off and say this computer does not meet the minimum requirements if you get the wrong one. So you're going to have to fiddle around with that a little bit there. Make sure you get the right one. Once you get the right one and it installs, just restart your computer one or two times should do it. And from there, if your USBs work all good from there, you're all good to go. Ah, now to test her out with a glorious moment. Shh. Dun dun. Dun dun dun. Ah, scan and fix. No, we're gonna continue without scanning. All working all good. So I hope you got I hope this video helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions or comments about how to get your USB 3 ports working on Windows 7, 8, or 10, leave that down in the comment section. And I'll hope you guys all have a great day. I'll see you next video. Adrian Mario.